Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See detail. It's the Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. With voice actors from coast to coast, you're listening to Project Audio. Psst. Hey, bud, over here. I hear you're looking for some laughs. One of those promising young comics, maybe. Uh Uh-uh. Go with Jack Benny. Not the fastest out of the starting gate, maybe, but he'll go the distance. He's always reliable. Plus, he comes cheap. With apologies to Sheldon Leonard, I'm Larry Groby with the Generic Radio Workshop. The 20th century gave us entertainers like Jack Benny and Bing Crosby, who did go the distance. They stayed in the spotlight for decade after decade, active right until their last years. I mean, look at these jazzy young fellows on the top here, entertaining America during the Depression. And here they are, still going in the 1970s. You know, to sustain a career like that, it takes likability, talent, (laughs) and good material. And that's why Project Audion is thrilled that Robert L. Mills, one of the comedy writers for Bob Hope, has written and directed this new Jack Benny radio show for us. And we think it captures the qualities that made people like Benny and Bing and W.C. Fields so popular for so, so long. So let's tune in to see what our transcontinental cast does with their transcribed live rendition of a Jack Benny show that might have been via Zoom and Project Audion. It's a a sure bet, bud. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you recall, Bing Crosby was the guest on last week's show and invited Jack, Phil, Dennis, and myself to play in his annual Pro-Am Golf Tournament at Pebble Beach. We took him up on his kind invitation and invaded Monterey's Del Monte Lodge, led by our fully tanned Tita Green leader and head pro, undaunted by large sand traps, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank you. That that was a great weekend, wasn't it? Sure was, Jack, and I thought you played great. Great. I finished next to last, between Percy Kilbride and Edmund Gwynn. Yes, and only because Edmund Gwynn showed up dressed as Santa Claus and was disqualified. Oh, hello, Phil. I'm just razzing you, Jackson. On Sunday, you really stood out. Stood out? Really? Yeah, you were the only player able to find the first tee after Saturday night's welcome party. (laughs) You're right, Phil. I've never seen celebrating quite like that before. Oh, you've never seen the boys in my band on Kay Kaiser's birthday. (laughs) And don't forget, Jack, you were voted best dressed golfer at the awards ceremony. Why, thank you, Phil. Thank you. I was, wasn't I? Jack, where did you ever find spats equipped with spikes, a tartan plaid kilt, and a golf bag shaped like a set of bagpipes? (laughs) Mary's sister, Babe, found them last summer on her vacation in Glasgow. And he can play the Bonnie Bonnie Banks of Loch Lomond on them. Oh. Hello, Mary. 
You should have seen him, Mary, on the first tee of the gallery. Wouldn't stop clapping and cheering. And, and he turned around and they realized he wasn't Bob Hope. <laughs> that wasn't my fault. They thought Rochester was Jerry Colonna without his mustache. Jack, you actually made Rochester caddy for you? That's nothing. My mother caddied for me. Oh, hello, Dennis. You and Jack should be ashamed of yourselves. Why? A Pebble Beach has some nasty roughs. Huh? I'm not wandering around there without next to kin. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous, Dennis, and you know it. Listen to the kid, Jackson. I've run into some pretty scary monsters in there myself. Only after too many clams at the clam bake. <laughs> <laughs> well, who caddied for you, Phil? I'm not at liberty to say, Libby, but Alice can't have lunch with you on Tuesday. She'll be at the chiropractor. You made Alice carry that big, heavy bag of golf clubs? Uh, she's in better shape than I am. She carries the bags of money from all them pictures to the bank all by herself. <laughs> Well, I hope you at least gave her a big tip. Uh, didn't have to. I was paired with Robert Mitchum, Errol Flynn, and Victor Mature. You should have seen us, Livy. We was billed as the kings of the silver screen. And now, <laughs> cut that out. He's, he's just being silly, Mary. You know, until last week, my mother carried me in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Be quiet, Dennis. I am trying to tell Mary about my golf bag. See, the problems started when we arrived at Union Station. I'd sent Rochester ahead to check our luggage in the baggage car. Twenty dollars to insure our luggage? Rochester, that's ridiculous. A luggage? What's the problem, boss? The poor insists that I show your golf bags as a musical instrument. A musical, <laughs> a musical instrument. It could have been worse. If he ever heard him plea, he would have been $35 for a dangerous firearm. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you picked up our tickets. What car are we in? Car number 16, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Day and Mr. Harris are in car 8. They said they'll meet us when we get to Monterey. Good, good. Uh, why don't you go and find our seats? I want to pick up some sandwiches for lunch and a magazine to read on the way. Good idea to stick the dining car, boss. You know how you always get motion sickness when the check arrives. What? I, I think it's that constant clickety-clack of the wheels. Uh, I'll pick up a couple of tuna fish sandwiches. Thanks, but I better stick to the dining car. Whenever I eat seafood on the train, it feels like a boat, and I get seasick. <laughs> We're in seats 37 and 38. Uh, I won't be long. Uh, let's see, uh, I think the lunch counter is this way. Uh. Psst. Hey, bud. Oh, it's you. Long time no see. Where you going? I'm on my way to buy a sandwich in a magazine. What kind of sandwich? <sighs> Tuna fish. Uh-uh. <laughs> Why? The tuna fish is weak in the turn and afraid to finish. Afraid to finish? Uh, just look at the breeding. Star kissed out of chicken of the sea. <laughs> then what would you suggest? Go with egg salad. Now, why egg salad? She knows how to scramble out of the starting gate and cross the finish line over easy. <laughs> uh, what's your magazine pick, bud? Better Homes and Gardens. Uh-uh. <laughs> well, why not? Better Homes and Gardens breaks down in mud. In mud? Yeah, especially during the planting season. Then what would you suggest? Go with Mechanics Illustrated. Why Mechanics Illustrated? Yeah, just look at the breeding. Pet boys out of Mr. Goodrich. <laughs> well, I don't care what you say. I'm buying a tuna sandwich and a Better Homes and Gardens. It's your funeral, bud. So long. <laughs> what a strange man. Well, uh, hey, there's Don Wilson. Uh, what are you doing way back here, Don? 
Oh, hello, Jack. I've been looking for a porter to help me get aboard. Help you aboard? Well, any porter will do that for you. Maybe, but I need one who can operate a forklift. <laughs> I forgot. You know, Jack, I'm sure excited about playing in Bing's tournament. So am I, Don. Tell me, have you been practicing? Oh, yes. I've been working on my stance all week. Your stance? Well, you must be hitting the ball a long way. Well, not exactly, but now I can at least see the ball. <laughs> That's a start. I'm on, I'm on my way to pick up lunch. Uh, see you later. So long, Jack. Passengers boarding the Coast Sterling should enter through gates LS, M, F, and T. Oh, my sponsors sure are tricky. They know every trick in the book. Ah, uh, here's the stand. Uh, I'm in first in line, too. Uh, oh, mister, uh, I'd like to order a sandwich. Well, you've come to the right place. We're an authorized dealership. Do you have any particular model in mind? I'd like a tuna fish sandwich. And let's see, um, a Better Homes and Gardens magazine. I don't care what he says. What who says? Oh, a strange racetrack tout who told me to go with chicken salad and um, mechanics illustrated. <laughs> Well, it's just as well. We're out of both of them. Wow. He really gets around. I've got plenty of tuna, though. You thinking of a hardtop or a convertible? Hardtop? <laughs> convertible? Oh, you want the sandwich on a sesame seed roll or open face? I'll have a roll. Uh, white, whole wheat, sourdough... White, dough. white is fine. Oh, wait, there's more. We import fine varieties from wheat all over the world. Pumpernickel, French, bagel, baguette, croissant... Thanks, no. but white is really fine. Well, have you given any thought to the upholstery? The upholstery? <laughs> yes, we offer a fine selection of mayo, mustard, relish... Mayo! Mayo is fine! Oh, now there's no need to raise your voice with me, sir. You want lettuce on your sandwich? Lettuce? Yes, thank you. Iceberg or romaine? Iceberg! Iceberg! Well, you say that as though you have something against romaine? No, 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 no. I love romaine. Oh, then it's just our romaine you can't stand. Okay, okay. Make it romaine. Uh, you want the roll toasted? No, no. Plain is fine. Look, I have a train to catch. <laughs> what does this look like? A train station? That's a little joke we like to tell. You want french fries with your sandwich? No, no, just the sandwich. Put his angel salad, coleslaw, mixed fruit. Look, mister, I am a little rushed. Well, excuse me. Here's your lousy sandwich. You had it made up back there all the time? Well, of course. Tuna on white is pre-made. Now, which magazine did you say you wanted? Better Homes and Gardens. Oh, sorry. We only have homes and gardens. All the better homes and gardens have sold out. Forget. Forget the magazine. Just ring up the sandwich. Oh, like it's all my fault. That'll be a dollar twenty-five. Oh, here you are. Uh, it's oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. That's my lucky ten. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. Sir, that's a Canadian nickel. I know. I'm thinking of transferring at Salinas and taking the express to Vancouver. <laughs> oh, an international traveler. You'd better hurry while I contact Interpol. Coach Starlight, now leaving on track 17 for Lompoc, Goleta, and Montecito. I, I just... I can't seem to get away from that weird announcer. Oh, here's uh, car 16. Oh, Porter, is, is this the Chattanooga choo-choo? No, that's track 29, but, but you've got plenty of time. Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Good to see you again. You know, you're the only one that remembers that line. <laughs> Thanks, Ralph. Uh, help me aboard, will you? 
There. There you go. There you go, Mr. Benny. Have a nice trip. Let's see. Uh, seat 18. Excuse me. Seat 22. Excuse me. Seat 26. Excuse me. Uh, seat... Sir, would you like to have my seat? Your seat? Why? Well, it's very close to the heater and, and your legs. Oh, they must be freezing in that kill. <laughs> No, thank you anyway, but I'm fine. But I can see the goosebumps from here. I'm okay. Really, uh, they give my knees more color. Uh, seat 30. Excuse me, seat 30. Mr. Benny! Mr. Kitzel! <laughs> what are you doing here? I'm on my way to see Bing Crosby Clan Baking Tournament. So am I. <laughs> I. I didn't know you were a golf man, fan. I'm not. I'm the official hot dog vendor. Oh, hot dog vendor. Oh, I almost forgot. Forgot? How could you forget I invented the greatest hot dog in the world? Pickle in the middle with the mustard on top. Just the way you like it and they're all red hot. Kosher hot dog, tasty bun. The pickle in the middle, that's the way it's done. <laughs> yes, yes, how could I forget the pickle in the middle? Ah, and don't forget the mustard on the top. All right. <laughs> mustard on top. And always just the way you like it. And always red hot, too. Believe me, I'll never forget your hot dogs again, Mr. Kitzel. Sir, may I have one of those hot dogs? Yes, I'll have two with mustard on top. Give me one of those two as well. Come on. I'll take one. I'll have one, Ooh. but keep that speckle in the middle off of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll leave you to your customers, Mr. Kitzel. Nice to see you again. Ah, here's Rochester. There you are, boss. I thought we'd pull out without you. Get me your bag. Uh, sorry I was delayed, Rochester. First I ran into... Oh, never mind. You wouldn't believe it anyway. <sighs> I think I'll... I'll take a little nap. Wake me when we get to Carmel. Jack, are you sure this is Bing's house? This place is huge. Hey, he's got four kids, and he owns a lot of orange juice plants. That's trees, Phil, trees. Oh. And I'm positive this is the right address. Are you sure he knows we're coming? And my mother carrying my bag with me in it. <laughs> at least I put Alice up at the lodge. Quiet down, fellas. Of course Bing knows we're coming. I had Rock just a call from the train depot. I'll ring the doorbell. <laughs> Deck of Records probably installed that for him. Free. Oh, well, what do you know? It's Bing Crosby. Hey, hey! Hiya, fellas. Welcome to my humble abode. Oh, we're so happy you invited us to play in your tournament, Bing. As you can see, we're ready to hit the links. Oh, oh I can see. Yes, sir, Bob, I can see indeed. I love that kilt. Hook, Mom. <laughs> Do come in, gentlemen, please. Wow, what a house. This looks like the Taj Mahal. Well, actually, Paramount had it built for the road to Calcutta. But my partner decided to entertain the troops instead, and we, we canceled the picture. I'll have Sabu bring in your luggage. Sabu? Well, he was, he was in between pictures, and I thought he fit right in. <laughs> oh, oh my! What do we have here? Can I help you with that bag, Mrs. Day? I'm not heavy. I'm her son. <laughs> Dennis, what are you doing in there, lad? Where are your glove balls and tees? Well, my mother carries them in her purse. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad you could join us. Let me show you to your rooms. Gee, Bing, 
I never knew that Taj Mahal, what's my call it, was so plush. Uh, we, we had to squeeze a few oranges, but we managed. How was your plane ride? Uh, well, uh, now that you mention it, it was a little bumpy going through Oxnard. Uh, some of those tracks need to be replaced. Duly noted. I'll take it up with the owner at the next board meeting. Who's the owner? Me. <laughs> oh, that explains why all those crossing gates sounded like the bells of St. Mary's. <laughs> well, I... I voted for blue of the night, but... Well, Don, your room is the second door on the left. Large wardrobe cabinets for our plus-size guests. I can see that. The sign over the door says, Orson Welles Suite. <laughs> Extra wide door, too. Hey, this one looks like the confessional at St. Boniface. <laughs> this is your room, Dennis. From a set of going my way. The very Fitzgerald Suite. Oh, great. He's my mother's favorite. And to the left is the game room. Completely equipped. The Harlem Globetrotters? Well, sometimes I like to shoot a few hoops for supper. Hey, nice layup, Metal Lord. Well, I hope you packed your trunks, because you're welcome to use the Olympic-sized pool, as long as the lifeguard's on duty. The lifeguard? Hey, Johnny Weissmuller. Pass from the Jack Benny Show, John. Take good care of him. Will do, Mr. Crosby. Tarzan? I'll have to keep, keep an eye on that boy. As a habit of letting the chlorine get a little too low. And this. Ta da! <laughs> My trophy room. Wow. Gold records on every wall, and the rest stacked like dishes. <laughs> on special occasions, we do like to dine off of them. <laughs> well, the 45s are perfect size for dessert. Uh, who's your decorator? Uh, Captain Nemo? Just a few examples of my deep sea acquisitions in the southern hemisphere. Well, them mummified catfish didn't escape from the Mississippi. <laughs> Well, left to right up there is record swordfish. Then there's a marlin and a CBS vice president. Gee, he looks... He looks so lifelike. Say, Bing, if this is your trophy room, Bing, where's your Oscar? Oh, that little bobble. You almost tripped on it coming in here. I tripped on it? Where did... Oh, oh you're using it as a doorstop? <laughs> They could save lives. Gary kept stumbling over the threshold after a bad night. <laughs> this is your sweet Phil. Right here. Glenn Miller. Very fitting. Uh, what's my phone number? Pennsylvania 65000? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, it is. Tried to stay true to the theme. And here's where you'll be bunking, Jack. The Bob Hope Suite? <laughs> well, those are posters from all our road pictures. I apologize for so many photos of Hope. Old Swivel Hips likes to admire himself. <laughs> I don't mind, Bing. I've always been a big fan of your road pictures. In fact, if you'd still like to make Road to Calcutta, I'm available. <laughs> you stand in line for Bob? No, 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 no. You look too much younger than he does. Really? He thinks younger? Oh, my, my. Have you seen that boy lately? <laughs> well, you know, Bing, these days they can do wonders with makeup. Well, enough of this showbiz badinage. I'll, I'll let you settle in. And don't forget you're due on the first tee at 6 a.m. Rochester, uh, have you found my ball yet? No! The monster spotted a chainsaw and confiscated it. 
Uh, well, forget about that ball. I'll drop another one. But that one was your favorite. You've had it since 1938. Uh, I only used it to practice putting. I'll drop one of these new balls Bing gave me. You sure? Whenever you find a new ball, you use the listed in the classifieds on the pre-owned sports equipment. Never, never mind that. Uh, what's my score so far? Let's see. After four holes, 22. <laughs> no eagles or birdies. But you did manage to wing a seagull. He, he should learn to look both ways before crossing the fairway. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're about... 40 yards from the green. I'll use my 8 iron. Here goes. <laughs> Whoops. And here's another one, boss. You don't have a clock on David Jones' locker. I, I don't know what happened. Maybe I'm not taking the club back far enough. Well, if you took it back any further, you'll be in Oceanside. Well, maybe I'm not... Maybe I'm not keeping my head down. Your head is fine, boss. It's the rest of your body that seems to have a mind of its own. I, I've got it. I think my grip's all wrong. Your grip is fine. It's the cloth that's doing all the damage. Say... <coughs> Duck, Rochester, that ball is coming this way. I'll hide behind the bagpipes. <laughs> Say... Say, Rochester, isn't that W.C. Fields coming up here? My sincere apologies, gentlemen. I was attempting to fade my approach shot around that intruding cypress tree, and the English I put on the ball failed to... Shaq Benny! <laughs> suffering sciatica! Is that you with your faithful companion, Rochester? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Fields! What a surprise. I never expected to see you here, Bill. Oh, I never missed the clam bake. Been around for so long. Bing made me an honorary clam. Pre-baked, of course. <laughs> I, I didn't know you were a golfer. Ah, my boy. It's a skill I picked up one day when after having mastered the pool cue. I unexpectedly found myself in the outer door. But isn't golf a lot different from pool? Mario a debit, my fairway neophyte. Both involve squeezing a small sphere into a hole not significantly larger than itself, using it from the bill suited to the task. Gee, I, I never thought of it that way. Well, on the greens, like giant pool tables. Or every bit as attractive to pigeons. You mean you take advantage of a less skillful player financially? Patrick Daniel Jonathan. It's the very reason the game was invented. Why do you think they're called greens? More silver certificates. Change owners out here. And then the exchange booth at Monte Carlo. That explains it. I never thought I paid Phil Harris enough to support that lifestyle of his. Well, I acquired plenty of fairway coinage. I suppose my proudest conquest was defeating Oliver Hardy in the Lakeside Club Championship in 39. Really? Well, I didn't know he played either. Ah, worthy adversary indeed. His caddy was Mae West who invited me once too often to come up and see her sometime. <laughs> well, one day I did. I noticed an extra club in all his bag. I immediately alerted the marshal who penalized him the necessary two strokes I needed to defeat him. Which reminds me, you know, Bill, I'd love to have you as a guest on my show. Well, I'd be delighted. I'm shackled to an exclusive ironclad contract with Bergen and McCarthy. <laughs> Come on, Jack. See you at the awards banquet.
Boy, Jack, this Del Monte Lodge is beautiful. No doubt about it. Bing really goes all out. Yeah, my finger bowl has an olive in it. That's my martini. <laughs> oh, don't worry. My fingers are clean. My mother ran me through the ball washer after I hit a birdie, an eagle, and a seagull. Dennis, seagulls don't count. I found out the hard way. <laughs> well, now you tell me. Oh, uh, quiet, fellas. The show is starting. Well, now it's time to announce this year's Clam Bake Awards. The trophy for the longest drive goes to Ray Milland, whose drive bounced off the sprinkler head. Careened onto the 101 freeway, landed on a flatbed truck, and ended up in Half Moon Bay. Congratulations, Ray! The winner of the Best Putting Award for sinking 10 consecutive footers. I believe that's 10 consecutive 10 footers. <laughs> while standing on one leg and drinking a glass of orange juice with a little something in it. Lindsey Crosby. Yeah, it's easy when your dad owns a company. Ah, uh, the one we've all been waiting for. The trophy for the best dressed golfer for an ensemble consisting of a tartan plaid kilt, spiked spats, and a golf bag shaped like a set of bagpipes. Jack Benny! Stand up, Jack. That's for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And my thanks to Babe Livingston for finding my outfit in Scotland. You know, my love affair with golf first began when I became a caddy at the age of 12. And then I suppose you bragged about caddying for Grover Cleveland. It was Herbert Hoover. Jackson, I love those stories about you playing golf in the Navy and teaching Harry Truman how to putt. Who's Harry Truman? He was, he was president. No, never mind, Dennis. Guess what, Jack? We just got word backstage that Sports Illustrated has named you Best Dressed Athlete of the Year and will run a picture of you on their cover dressed in your tartan kilt and spats. Really? Really? Gee, I, I wonder... Wonder what, Jack? You should be excited. Well, I am, I am. I, I just hope they remember to airbrush out the goosebumps on my legs. <laughs> hey, good night, Jack. Uh, gladly, Mary, but not before thanking my guests, Bing Crosby, who appeared courtesy of Paramount Pictures, producers of The Road to Zanzibar, now in a theater near you, and W.C. Fields, who appeared courtesy of Universal Studios. Our guests next week will be Jimmy and Gloria Stewart. Good night, folks. The Jack Benny program was created by Sam Heron, Milt Josephsburg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, and Hal Goldman, and written by Robert L. Mills. It's produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. It is heard by our armed forces overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Network. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. That's our Project Audion for this time. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, let us know at projectaudion at gmail.com or like us on Facebook or YouTube. Until next time, thanks for listening. That was worth it. Cut and print. Yeah. Let me record it now. Let's do it for real. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, ready, right, everybody. CB. Let me go get some. Print it when you want. Let me go get a. By the way, I call me. Thank you for listening to Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network. We invite you to continue the amazing audio tomorrow on Mutual with the Monday matinee.
our weekly series of dramatic, theatrical, classic, eclectic, and live radio dramas. You can subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed every day for the world's largest curated collection of audio drama, or find the Monday Matinee feed in your favorite podcast players. See you tomorrow at the Matinee, and thanks so much for listening. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.